Hey guys, I'm Chris Buck and a very warm welcome to Friday Fretworks and this week we're taking a closer look at the Fender Duo Sonic. <laughs> Now considering I'm a bit of a Fender fanboy, my knowledge of their offset range is absolutely woeful. So perhaps it's no surprise that I didn't actually know the Dio Sonic existed until last week. I initially consoled myself with the idea that maybe it was a new design whose introduction I'd missed, but it turns out the Dio Sonic was designed in 1955 meaning that it's only a year younger than the Stratocaster. Now rewind momentarily to 1955 and Bill Haley on the Comets Rock Around the Clock is in its 10th straight week at number one and kids across the US are going absolutely crazy for this new thing called rock and roll. Leo Fender and Don Randall never wants to miss a trick spotted a huge gap in the market for instruments aimed at young musicians and thus the Music Master and Duo Sonic were born. The Duo Sonic was the bigger brother of the Music Master which as the name suggests was the dual pickup version of a guitar that Fender marketed as three quarter sized, specially designed for young musicians with small fingers. While the Duo Sonic isn't strictly a three quarter sized guitar, it does have a shorter scale length which is 22 and a half inches three inches shorter than the 25 and a half, which is more typical to Fender guitars. And as such, it does have a much smaller overall feel. Now, at the time, the Telecaster and the Stratocaster were squarely aimed at professional musicians with deeper pockets, whereas the Music Master came in at $119.50, the Duo Sonic came in at $149.50. Now compare this to the $199.50 for the Telecaster or $274 for the Stratocaster. They were much cheaper options. The Duo Sonic featured a Stratocaster style headstock with two single coil pickups, more akin to a Telecaster in that respect, as well as a three saddle Telecaster style bridge. Also had a three way selector toggle, it's rather unusual for Fender, more akin to what Gibson were offering at the time, very different to the blade style switch that we were used to seeing on Stratocasters and Telecasters. The body was also subtly smaller and thinner, designed to make it look more in proportion with the younger players at which this guitar was aimed. After a few initial teething problems with the gold wearing off the anodized pickguard, the Duo Sonic was finally released in 1956, offered in a light beige color Fender called Desert Sand. Now the guitar underwent a few changes in its time, principally in 1959 changed over to slab rosewood boards, as the entire Fender line did, and then in 1961 Fender announced that all student models were now to be offered in sunburst, making them closer in appearance to that of the professional line. In 1964, Fender introduced a third student model to the range in the shape of the Mustang, which is principally very similar to the Duo Sonic and Music Master, but with a vibrato system, as well as an updated chrome control panel. Now, the Duo Sonic and the Music Master very quickly received the same treatment, bringing the overall aesthetic forward into the 1960s, as well as all guitars now being offered in the shorter 22.5 scale length, as well as a medium scale of 24 inches. The Duo Sonic was finally dropped from Fender's catalogue in 1969, presumably because of the massive success that the Mustang was experiencing. Over the years, the Duo Sonic has proved popular with musicians the world over, not just young ones with small fingers, most notably of which Jimi Hendrix, but in more recent years, John Lennon, Rory Gallagher, Mike Bloomfield, Joe Walsh, David Byrne, Johnny Winter, any number of musicians have put the Duo Sonic to great use, which may go some way towards explaining why Fender finally reissued the Duo Sonic as a Mexican-made instrument in 2016.
Now this particular model comes in the original 1956 colorway of Desert Sand with a gold pickguard, though crucially does come in the later Duo Sonic 2 size proportions of a 24 inch scale length. So it's still short scale but not quite as small as the original 22 and a half. Also has a string through body as well as a new Stratocaster style bridge for increased intonation. It's also worth mentioning that as of next week, July 14th, Fender are moving their entire offset range into the player series with the addition of a load of cool new colors. So if if you're on the lookout for an offset, now it's probably a good time to keep your eyes peeled. Funnily enough, I recently shot an interview for Fender with Toman, where both myself and Guillaume spoke at length about the lack of an offset within our collection. I fast forward a week or so and here I am with this Duo Sonic, and honestly I've been having an insane amount of fun with it. It's kind of like the music equivalent of driving a go-kart. It's fast, it's fun, it's bright, it's snappy, it feels a little bit like a halfway house between maybe a Strat and a Tele. Obviously it is shorter scale at 24 inches as opposed to 25 and a half, which is the more typical Fender size, but this is a mark the improvement on the original 22 and a half scale length that would have come on the original guitar so if you're in the market for an offset and don't mind one that is a little bit shorter scale you could definitely do worse than to check out the duo sonic as ever i'm chris buck thank you very much for watching friday fretworks please subscribe hit the bell icon if you haven't already and i shall see you next week for another video cheers guys take care i'll see you soon